Hello everyone, today I have a question that I would like to ask you and to ask myself. And that is, does God love everyone the same way, equally, having given the same opportunity to anyone and everyone to be saved? This question has a lot of baggage that we can bring to the table, depending on what your soteriological beliefs are. If you are Calvinistic, Reformed, you want to talk about a whole bunch of things to answer this one question. As someone that does not find it the most convincing position, that of the Reformed uh, views, when it comes to answering this question, I would still like to consider it and to Take some time to unpack the simple question without really having this bias in as far as I'm already convinced that it's the wrong answer and so I'm not really going to consider the other side. As far as I'm concerned right now, if I find some things on the other side that are more convincing than what I hold to, then I will follow that side because I am looking for what is the most convincing position using scripture as a guide. And also, I think it's important to point out that your personal views are not infallible. The things that you have been taught by Bible study, um, commentary, books by very respected Bible teachers, those are not on the same standard as the Word of God. So it's important not to believe this presupposition that Reformed theology is true and infallible, and so we just accept it and that's it. We don't we don't consider other things because we have just it's almost like we're we're setting Reformed theology on the same uh, level as infallible scripture. And we don't want to do that. On my hermeneutics series, I was asking Alan Schliemann about this topic about, well, how do you know when it comes to things that Christians disagree on? Uh, Christians agree on many things, probably most things, um, the most important things, how we define God and so forth. But we do disagree a lot on like more about the philosophical arguments like how does god know things or how does god do things and that's that's what we're really analyzing here and i think it would be very unwise for anyone to think that they have figured out god and that we have all the answers we haven't even gone to heaven and actually like seen god and and like understood completely who he is and how he did things and all of that. But we he did leave us scripture. And so for that, that is the reason why we can discuss these things to try to better understand God. But I definitely never want to uh, deceive myself into thinking that I have figured out God. That said, why am I even making this video at all, aside from asking this question? On my last video, when I was discussing this book, I totally <laughs> was running out of battery for my phone, and I forgot to address one of the most persuasive points that he raises in favor of God giving everyone the opportunity to be saved. At least that's how I understood it. Um, obviously, I don't represent the author's views. This is just how I am processing the book as a reader. And so I mentioned it in my last video. Um, I wrote a quote on, in the end. He made the point that Jesus fulfilled the law completely, perfectly, like no one else could because he is God. He's the son of God. He's the perfect lamb of God. And that's why he was able to offer his life as a 
perfect lamb offering as a ransom for for many when jesus was asked what are what's the most important commandment jesus said to love god and to love your neighbor so if these are the most important commandments then of course jesus had to have done this perfectly and so how does this relate to this question well if jesus loved everyone perfectly then can we argue anything less than jesus loving everyone perfectly when it comes to who he died for and that's a very interesting point i considered this point but i also couldn't help but go to the parable that jesus himself gave to explain who is my neighbor which relates to this question right because it started off by someone asking jesus what's the most important commandment and he says to love god and love your neighbor and then the man followed that by asking him well who is my neighbor and so it's related who is my neighbor who am i supposed to love not just care about not just extend kindness to but love and we learn that the good samaritan loved in that he didn't pass over that person that needed help and he went uh, far and beyond to help that person to bring them to recovery to give them life because that person was going to die had not um, the good samaritan stopped and helped that person like the other two religious people that just passed by they didn't love that neighbor um, because they they didn't do anything to help their neighbor it's related it's jesus teaching us what it means to love and who we are to love so did jesus pass over people that were going to die without his help i think it's a fair question to ask and i would say that if he did he did not fulfill the law perfectly i am convinced that jesus did not pass over people that needed him that were dying that could not help themselves jesus came so that everyone could know about him about the father and so that everyone could learn about this love that jesus says that motivated the father to give his son to die for the forgiveness of our sins when jesus comes and he does that there were not just some people that were dying everyone was dying and so he also gives the example that whoever believes in him similar to the way that moses lifted up the serpent on the pole and whoever looked to it would be saved in that same sense jesus was raised on the cross he, he was raised from from death he resurrected he ascended to the father and we have heard these things even us but all the people that were in jesus uh, days there on earth they they witnessed it they they told people they they wrote what we have as scripture now so god has made this knowledge available for everyone so i believe that these are all ways that god was extending his help to all of the neighbors of the world jesus did not pass over some people he actually helped all of the neighbors to be able to have life but in the same sense that god made moses lift up a a, a serpent with a pole um, in the same sense god made it so that people had to look to him had to believe in him the um, comparison that jesus 
uses with Moses, God did not make people just like somehow certain people that he wanted to be saved in that scenario. He didn't do something in them. He did something outside of them. He told Moses to raise up that, that serpent. And in the same way, God has done something outside of us. He has given us his scripture. He has given us revelation of who he is. He has given us even evidence about his crucifixion, about his resurrection. We have eyewitness testimony. He has done so many things externally from us. I mean, how did these people know to look to the serpent? They had to be told, right? Look, look, salvation. Look over there and you'll you'll be spared of death. Those, those venomous serpents that have bitten you um, and you're about to die, go just look at that, that serpent that, that Moses has raised. In that same way, we as followers of Christ are telling people, hey, look, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus, look at, look at him raised. And so people, they hear the knowledge that, hey, you're, you're dying, you're about, to, you're about to enter judgment not too long from now. You need to be saved. You need that savior that has been raised. Look to him. Look, why, why look to him? Because when you hear that Jesus can save you, your choice is to look to him, to believe in him. Just like those people, um, look, look to the serpent on the pole. Why? Because you're going to be saved. And those that didn't, they just died, right? Like, I, I don't, what if there were people that said, I don't believe that, right? And, and they just died. But when people believed, hey, I want to be saved. Let me look at the serpent. Even if they didn't have that much faith, you know, they're, they're going to like give it a try because they don't want to die. So they look and they were spared. And in that same sense, when we hear about what Jesus has done and we turn to him and we look to him and he saves us, but we are obeying what he is telling us to do. Do people want to go to hell? Do people want to go to heaven? There's an argument where, well, people would look, but they don't want to. So God has to come in and change who you are in order for you to even look in the first place. And that is not anywhere, as far as I can tell, in the example that Jesus gives with Moses. Right before, you know, John 3, 16, there is nothing that shows that those people God had placed in their hearts to look to that serpent that Moses raised. I cannot bring that onto John 3, 16, that people had to be regenerated before in order to believe. I'm not going to add words to Jesus' mouth. So as far as I can tell, I can support that by scripture. I have Old Testament, New Testament. That's how I'm understanding specifically those things about love, about who can believe and why. And so I know there's a whole lot of other things that, like I said, it's kind of like baggage that we bring onto the question. But I'm trying really hard to keep it as, as to the point as possible. Otherwise, it's like one of those things when you're a married couple and you, you have one problem and then everybody wants to talk about like a million things and you guys never even like resolve the one thing. You have to stay on topic. So we're staying on topic in this video. As tempting as it is to consider many other things. I propose that Jesus did fulfill the law perfectly in that he saw that we were all dying, we could not save ourselves, we were in need of help, loving help. Someone needed to love us enough to help us, to bring us back, in a sense, to life, right? Because that man was dying. So it was like that Good Samaritan was like bringing him back to life in a sense. And Jesus came, told us God loved the world. 
God saw the, the men and the women that were on the floor in need of great help. He loved us and he didn't just have feelings for the world. He didn't just have kindness. The Good Samaritan doesn't just leave him with like a cup of water. You know, the Good Samaritan goes far and beyond to make sure that the person will be okay and will be taken care of even by someone else. Leaves him money even. It's like Jesus is so intentional. Hey, the Good Samaritan did this, did this, did this. Many people would think that you could just do one thing maybe clothe the person and you know hope that they'll they'll be protected from the sun or whatever uh, but no Jesus says he did this he did this and it's almost like if you put yourself in the situation of that good Samaritan you're like well maybe I wouldn't have given money <laughs> maybe I would have just left them to be treated and I would have kept my money and I, I would have been okay because I helped them enough I think that we fail to glorify God when we say that God didn't love everyone in that same way that the Good Samaritan loved that person that needed him. It's almost like you want to paint God as one of the religious people in the parable that passed over the person in need. And just because we say, well, God passes over people. It's not like he actually makes them go to hell. He just doesn't do the work in them for them to be able to be saved. So God's not culpable. But according to the parable, that is a bad thing. And we don't want to attribute any bad things to God. Love, according to Jesus, is helping the person in need. So I think that God helped everyone everyone was in need god did far and beyond what he had to but according to who he says he is he is love so it's he's not going to do anything that is not in his nature so of course god i'm not going to be surprised that god knows what is love perfectly because he is love I'm not going to be surprised that he went out of his way to love everyone in the same way and to provide the opportunity for everyone to be saved. So I believe that what Jesus did on the cross was enough for everyone to look to him and to be saved. Now, why aren't people saved is a tempting question that I'm not sure if I should talk about in this video. Um, the rebuttal will always be then God didn't get what he wanted. Or other people would say, well, why did God make people knowing that not everyone was going to look to him? Knowing that those people were going to go to hell. Is it loving to create people knowing that some of them will not go to heaven? I had thought of an example where I would say to you, to all of my viewers, I would say, whosoever sends me an email, I will send you this book or um, uh, whatever book, if you don't want this book for the example. Why wouldn't you want this book though, right? If you are wanting to learn more about um, God's love and provision, or if you want to better understand um, the other side to make sure that your views are are biblical is that enough promotion for the book okay email me and I will send you a book for free all you have to do is email me okay I feel like that is the plain reading of the Bible that tells us believe and I'm gonna give you salvation but some people want to say well there's more to it so i thought okay the other side would probably say well not not everyone is going to be able to email you except the people that that know your email address so if i were to 
want to rephrase that to make you understand that not every one of you actually will be able to even enter my free book giveaway, I would have rephrased it as whosoever has my email address, whosoever I have given my email address can email me and then you will receive the book. I feel like if the Bible would have phrased it that way, uh, for example, whosoever God has caused them to believe or whosoever God has regenerated them to believe uh, will be saved. I don't feel that you get that from, from the Bible verses that we've looked into. Sure, we can look at other Bible verses to make sure that we have like all of the information, right? To form our views biblically. But I think also you can make the mistake that what one verse over there is talking about, we want to project that onto a verse that is not talking about that at all. So I feel like I'm doing good hermeneutics in as far as these Bible verses that I talked about, which go over love, about the commandments, and um, who can believe or for who did God send his son. These have not said anything about only some people can believe or God only loves some people. I don't feel that they have made the point for the, the other side. Maybe there will be other videos where I can go over those other um, passages in the Bible. But for this video, we're not going into those. And I feel like if, if you do side with the other side, if you're going to make an argument against what I'm saying, you need to stay in these passages to be fair I would say I think that's fair so my free book giveaway which I'm not really doing <laughs> just in case anyone got confused you can find my email address probably if it's out there if it's in one of my past YouTube videos maybe you could go to my website to ask me what my email is so that you could meet the requirements of what I'm giving away freely to anyone who has the information and can fulfill my requirements. In the same way, God has given everyone the information. He has sent messengers so that everyone can hear about him, about his son. The only reason why people would not email me or believe in Jesus would be that you're not interested. If you're not interested in the book, you don't want to receive something free. People might not want to receive God's uh, forgiveness, God's salvation for many different reasons. I think it's one thing to say, people don't want to versus people can't. People don't want to believe even though they heard for whatever reasons, there are many that anyone can have. They don't find it convincing, and hence that's why it's believe, right? There's this trust in the information you do have. It's never told to us, believe because you have um, all of the information to answer every question that you have. You have to figure out God completely and understand why all of these things happen in your life or in the world. And it, it's, it, God gives us the information. God gives us, so to speak, the email address. All you need to know is that Jesus came, died. He's the son of God. He rose again. He is the way to be saved, to be forgiven, believe. That's all the information that you needed. And so... You believe, you make your choice to trust in that information. It's a decision, it's not a feeling. You don't have to feel like, I believe these things. It's a choice, it's a decision that we make. You don't have to feel like you want a book from me. You decide, I want a free book. I'm going to email her. I'm gonna look for the information I'm going to do the requirements so that I can receive that free book. And in the same way, God has extended um, 
salvation to all and has been very clear about the requirements and he as far as i can tell in the bible has not made certain people more capable or incapable based off of something that he does inside of them in order to make that decision to meet the requirements that that god has laid out to be saved since god has given us everything we need in order to be saved by him alone he is good he has loved us all of us he has provided for all of us to receive this eternal life this forgiveness he cannot be attributed any wrongdoing for the people that have chosen not to go to heaven so those people um, have chosen to reject what God has lovingly extended to them and so if we're going to fault someone it's not the creator which provided the opportunity for all to be saved it's the man who rebelled against God and rebelled against receiving the free gift that he was able to receive. And God receives glory in all of it in that God loved. God loved us all. He provided for us all to be saved. And God gets glory for executing mercy, but also executing justice. Because there are people like Hitler in the world. There are people that don't choose to love their neighbor the way God has exemplified for us, but they choose to hate their neighbors. And that's why we have all of the pain and suffering in the world. And would it be loving for God to let all of those things go? All of those murderers that do not repent, that are not sorry, that do not, you know, stop doing those things. They just they're just harming people. They're just violent people. Where would the love be if God didn't... I mean, it's one thing that God extends mercy to those terrible... Those, all of us, right? We're all... We have all sinned. We have all broken God's laws. We minimize our sins often. But we are not 100% doing good things all the time. Including people that have been regenerated. People that have the Holy Spirit in them. No, you're not doing everything right the whole time. You're going against what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. If you're honest with yourself many times. But especially like people that um, are doing like some of the worst things that just kind of are frightening, quite frankly. But God in his love and his mercy, which is good to you to be merciful, can forgive those people that turn to him, that repent, that ask God to forgive them, to save them. The Holy Spirit can come inside of them and change them. And like I said, even when you're a Christian, even when you have the Holy Spirit, you still have to choose to obey the Holy Spirit. You're following Jesus. You're intentional about learning the word and practicing it in your life wherever it applies however on twitter uh, in your home with your kids with your spouse with your family members with your enemies like the example that jesus gave that's one thing when god extends mercy to undeserving people none of us deserved god's mercy more than the other just <laughs> nobody goes to heaven because they sinned less we're all in the same category sinners Okay, but then you have sinners that sin in spite of God's mercy and appeal to repent. Okay, so what is God to do in that situation? Extend mercy to people that are not asking for his mercy? That rebel against him? For example, Satan, those that followed him. People, for example, that say... Yeah, they find it convincing about God, but they just don't want 
someone to tell them how to live their life people that like how their life is going they they enjoy um living cricket lives those people all they have to do is recognize god is lord and he's the one that tells us how to live our life and when those people don't do that that's why you have all the pain and suffering in the world because the result of sin even in the garden um illnesses sickness death but you have like all of these crimes in history including people that supposedly are doing it because they're christians those people fall in the same category as like all the other people because that's obviously that's that's not what god is teaching us uh, in his word that we're to live that way it's almost like someone did the worst thing possible in your mind and they're standing in front of you and it's like everybody sees how terrible the thing is and the person is like not sorry i did it i would do it again if I wasn't in prison, I would do it to more people. It's almost like you want to spit on on a judge's face, right? Like the judge is sending you to jail for your crime and you're not even sorry that you did it and you're going to jail. And if you could, you would spit on the judge's face because don't care. Don't That's against the law. Don't care. And in the same way, people do that to God. Um, you've heard God says love your neighbor don't care I'm gonna do what I want to do hell don't care you know and and it's interesting because some people would rather say I don't believe in hell and that way it's it's almost like I don't believe in jail you know I'm gonna I'm gonna live my life there's there's no jail I'm gonna do whatever I want there's no judge there's there's no courtroom I'm gonna do whatever I want because there are no consequences. And I think that people do the same thing with God. You can't ignore that we have the Bible. You can't ignore that we have evidence that someone called Jesus was very clear in saying that he is the son of God, came to pay the price for the forgiveness of our sins. So when you reject God's love, you just pretty much live your life like, don't care. I'm not going to do the thing that you're telling me to do for all of the reasons that you have. You want to make a case against God's goodness, whereas you're the one that God is going to judge for your lack of goodness. When we see things like this in the bigger picture, we can see that, wait, why are we saying that God is not good for creating people with the opportunity to be saved but they chose not to be saved and they go to hell so you're saying god should have forced people to believe in him and so what does that make us are you arguing for a world where anytime anyone uh, takes out a gun and is about to like commit murder a flower comes out of the gun is that is that the kind of world you think God should have created? It's just so counter reality. I think it's it's wonderful. The, the world that God created is wonderful, where he gave us free will. I think that the Holy Spirit does work in us, but it's he can receive the glory for what he's doing in me, even when I go against what he's trying to do in me. So. You don't have to argue that God gets what he wants because he was the one that made us believe. You don't have to argue that. You can um, simply say, you know, just think that God receives glory because the Holy Spirit is inside of me. And there are some changes that, some good changes that are happening in me. He has given me the Bible. He provides Bible teachers to help me to learn more about him. He provides an annoying Christian co-worker to help me to think more about him so that I may be saved, so I can take the step of trust in what everything he's given me. I do believe that God extends his, his love to atheists, 
to to every 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 person um, in spite of their beliefs and even if you reject it God gets the glory because you did hear you did hear about Jesus the fact that you have built a worldview that doesn't include God in it is evidence that God provided what you needed in order to be saved you heard about God and you just built an argument to keep God outside of your worldview. But God still gets the glory even when you said no to him. Even when people go to hell, God does get the glory because you were given the opportunity to trust in him, to believe in him. And you were loved. God loved you. He gave you more than sunshine and rain. He gave you his son. He extended the help that you needed in order to be saved. Did you look to the, so to speak, serpent on the pole that was raised? Or did you choose to die in your judgment? Because judgment is coming to everyone, whether you're the nicest person on earth or you're the worst person on earth. Judgment is coming to us all. And so everyone needs to look to Jesus to be spared of that judgment. We are all loved by God. We have all heard about Jesus dying for us. Everyone that's listening to this video has heard. And for the people that haven't, we need to share that with them. Because why? Why would God send us? Not so that just some of the people that God has worked in them to believe. No, because God wants everyone to hear it. And whoever will believe, those are the people that will be saved. Now, does that mean only those people could be saved? I think you would have to prove that. I think you would have to prove that it's the case in the reality that we live in. Some people give testimony about what they feel when they were, when they believed they were saved. They felt something. So, I mean, that... I guess you can try to make a case based off of what you feel. Mostly you would have to prove through scripture that it's clearly taught that God did something in you in order to believe in him. Or that God only loved some people to do that in them so that they could be saved. And I think that usually the arguments in favor of that argue like philosophically and try to say, well, God doesn't get the glory unless he does that. And and you bring the, you compare all the religions about monergism and synergism that most religions uh, teach that man has to do something. And, and But it's like, you're just, you're not really making your point through scripture. You're just arguing, well, we're not like the other religions. We say that only God gets the glory. That's not true. If God created reality, a system in order, like kind of like my example, the email, if God set the conditions and God saw that it was good because he provided everyone the opportunity to be saved, then he gets the glory because his plan is in place. The people that turn to him, that trust in him are saved. The people that don't receive judgment. And it's, it's good because like I explained already about hell, he extends mercy, but people that don't want to receive that mercy, it doesn't make the creator evil because he gave them the ability to receive his mercy. That doesn't make God evil. That makes you rebellious. So that's evil. He made you. He gave his son for you, didn't have to do that, loved you enough to do that. So don't rebel against God. Believe and be saved. You can. God gave you the information. God gave you free will. You can make a decision without having the feelings. You can choose to follow God. And the Holy Spirit comes, helps you to learn more about him helps you change your life around. If you have any rebuttals to what I have to say, feel free to leave them in the comments section. 
please remember to be respectful of other people's views. I hope that I've been respectful. Maybe I've been very straightforward in this video, but it's not meant to be disrespectful to anyone or to belittle anyone's views. And I hope no one will belittle my views as well. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like the videos that I'm making, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, it helps my channel to be more visible to more people and it encourages me as well. Um, I'll do this for God, even without people doing those things, but it's nice to hear from you guys. So I'll see you on the next video. Bye. You give us so much love. You give us everything. I can see you love now